What are you looking at me like that for? I'm looking at you. Why? Because I can. Because I've had a shave. You didn't even notice, did you? Of course I did. It's clean your face. Hello again, folks, and welcome to another one of our little cooking uh, uh, soirees we're having, baby. <laughs> baby. Well, here we are again, folks, with another one of our little soirees we're having in the kitchen. We are? What? Spotted dick. You, what? Spotted dick? Yeah. Here we go, folks. Right, well, I've not had a spotted dick for a long time, Sharon. I don't think I've ever had it. You wouldn't have had it, Sharon, no. I don't think, but I definitely have had it a few times in the past, and it's not the sort of spotted dick that these reprobates are thinking about, baby. It's like you've kept from me if you have. You just know what they're thinking, don't you? Yeah. Hey? But it's not spotted dick, dokes. dokes. It's an old-fashioned recipe, which I used to have as a child. I don't know whether you've had it at all, have you? No, we had syrup sponge. We didn't have spotted Yeah, well, we've already done a syrup sponge, but we're going to be doing another one in the air fryer. So how would you normally cook a spotted dick? You'd steam it in the saucepan. Right, so basically you, you cook it on a sauce, on, in a saucepan, you have a little bowl inside there, you sit it on top of that so it ain't touching yeah. the water, and you have to leave it on for hours and hours, yes, didn't you? Yes, yes. Probably about two hours. Well, that's not a very efficient way of cooking, so we're gonna try and do it today in the air fryer using two techniques. Because we've got the Ninja dual tray air fryer, what we're gonna do, we're gonna cook two little ones in one, two little ones in another, and First of all, what we do, we show you the ingredients, and then when we get to that bit, we show you what we're gonna do. Does little, it need steaming? Does it need steaming, yeah. Let's have a look at the ingredients. Here's our ingredients for spotted dick. 200 grams or seven ounces of self-raising flour, 100 grams or three and a half ounces of suet, 50 grams or two ounces of currants or sultanas, 150 milliliters or five fluid ounce of milk, 50 grams or two ounces of sugar, some butter to line the ramekins. Right, what's the first step, baby? We're gonna put the, the flour in. Right, okay. Then we're gonna put the suet in. Right, suet, for people who don't know, it's basically just lard, beef, beef fat, isn't it? Yeah. And you can get a vegetable shortening, so if you're not happy with using this, although it's traditional. Well, for vegetarians. Or for vegetarians even, yeah, you can use the, uh, yeah. they call it shortening. It comes from the same company, Atora. And all we're gonna do, literally, just is- Just rub it together. Just rub it together, like you would do if you was creaming or putting together butter. Making a crumble. Making a crumble, same sort of thing. So just give that a crumble in, folks. Just so it's all well mixed. Right, okay, so what we're gonna do now is put in the rest of the ingredients, folks. It's really a simple one, this. So we've got currants here. Now you can use sultanas, you can use raisins, depending on what you've got in your cupboard. What you prefer. Yep, and then we're using, again, just standard white sugar there. Again, you can use brown sugar. A lot of people use brown sugar. And uh, it, again, what you've got in your cupboard. So give it a good stir together. So this is base, a basic recipe for spotted dick, folks. So that's all the dry ingredients all ready now. So I'm now gonna help Sharon by pouring in this until we bring it together as a dough. No need to put your hands in and mold it as a dough. So we're just gonna sort of incorporate this into the, the mix, the uh, milk. And basically you just wanna end up so that you haven't got any of that powder left Again, just fold it together. It'll be a sticky dough, this one. It, it don't come together like a proper dough. And you, again, you don't want to over mix it as well. So just keep it going. So there we go. That's the 150 millilitres of milk in. And we're just going to stir this until we've picked up all the bits of powdery stuff in there until we're left with a, a dough. Well, sometimes if it doesn't come together, folks, just put a little drop more in. It depends just on your flour. A dash, I think this needs. Just a little dash, wait there. So I'm coming it's in It's nearly there. It's nearly there, very nearly there. Just, just look, 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 watch this. There you go, dash. look at that. And as you can see, folks, at the bottom of the bowl now, there's no more of that flour there at all. And don't forget, she's not really had to get her hands dirty at all. It she's, it's not overworked it, and it's all the raisins are going all through it. So that's basically it. So these are the little moulds we use, and these are the ones we're going to use today. This is what we've done our Yorkshire puddings in. Now, a lot of you have been asking where we got these from. Now, we did get them off of Amazon, I think, years and years yeah. ago. But they got a similar one on eBay now, very same size as this, but they're made out of aluminium. We leave a link in the description below for them. So if you want some of these, do have a look below the video. You'll find a description of a very similar one to these, exactly the same size. And these tend to do Yorkshire puddings and little puddings like this as well. So give them a good butter up because you don't want these sticking. So literally give them a good white brown with the, the, um, 
the butter, folks. That's what you want to end up with, something like that, look. You want a good smear of butter in there, folks, because you don't want these sticking to the sides. And now we're going to take the, the, the mixture and we're going to have to break this into four pieces. And you might have to get your fingers in there, baby. And again, you don't want to fill these to the top, but make sure you push them right in. And again, just to push it in with your fingers, folks. And you want probably about a, a centimetre gap at the top there. This should do perfectly four ramekins of this size. And there we go. So for four of these ramekins, folks, that mixture amount there, as you can see, was absolutely perfect. Well, we've had a bit of a disagreement here, folks, haven't we? <laughs> she likes some... Traditional. Well, call it traditional, that way. We're just pulling the greaseproof paper over the top like that. That's all right, I and suppose. And be going over as well. Yeah. Oh, I've done it this way, where you just put the disc on the top, like that, and just push it down, like that, so you got it like that. So all I've done to achieve my one is just fold the greaseproof paper in half, fold it in half again, like that. Get your scissors, and literally just cut a little crescent out of the corner like that. All right, so when you open it up, there's your disc, and your disc thing, and that goes on there like that. And that's what I think is the better way. So we've got three done my way, and the last one, she's done just by covering it over like that. And she's got this little double fold in there in case, because it will rise in there. And I suggested, but she don't know this yet because she hasn't seen it. So all I was gonna do was literally do that, put the pie, or the pudding, on top, and literally just bring the sides up, so that way, by doing it like that, you've got a little carry angle, Sharon. Yeah, but how's it going to rise, just preventing it from rising? There's loads of space in the top there, baby. I'll stick with my way. There's loads of space what? in the top. That, to me, is ideal. There's that is ideal. There's loads of space for that to rise, so I'm going to do one like that. Will you do your other one like that, then? And I'll do another one like mine. And I don't think you'll find, Sharon. Mine's just here. That's the way I've been... But sometimes, shall we have to move on in life, baby. And me, being a bit of a risk taker and a chancer. May have to move on, but sometimes the old ways are the best way. And it also gives us, in our air fryer, a handy little carry pot. So you can choose whatever you, whatever way you want to do, folks. Wait for the end result, I suppose. That's the thing to do, isn't it? So what we're going to do, though, is now we're going to show you what we're going to do in our air fryer to do a little test to see what's the best way to cook a steamed pudding, if it needs to be steamed, in the air fryer. So let's go over there. Right, folks, so we just literally boiled the kettle up there. And all we're going to do, in tray number one, as you can see, we've got the trivets in there. We're just gonna put some boiling water in that one. And we're hoping this is gonna act as the bain-marie. That's it there, baby. And we're just gonna literally plonk them both in. That's it, just turn my head there down a little bit. So they go in tray number one. As I say, that's got the water in it. And that goes in there like that. The second one, we're putting in dry. Again, it's still got the tray underneath it, the uh, crisper tray, but we hopefully it's not gonna crisp up. We'll find that out as we uh, come to the end of the cooking. And that one, we're gonna put in tray number two. So, water, no water. So we're gonna turn it on now. We're gonna hit the match function because we want them both to cook at the same time so that we've got an idea of which one is gonna turn out the best if they are any different whatsoever. Now we do understand that some air fryers don't have a bake setting on. This one has. The main difference between air fry and bake is that the fan on the top rotates a lot slower. Just helps a cake cook slower and more evenly. But um, we're gonna use the air fry setting here and we're gonna lower the temperature to 160 on both of them, degree, degree centigrade. And we're gonna set the time initially for 30 minutes and then we'll have a look at them and see if they need cooking for longer so we're doing a little bit of an experiment here with you and you'll be able to see exactly what happens with us so off we go we'll come back at the half hour mark we'll have a look at them and see what happens to them because we don't know do we oh them spotted dicks right we're back folks and all we've done here is just get a little bit of um, ambrosia custard on here you can make your own if you want we got this in the cupboard, it's the easy way out. So that's all ready now, and that's just coming to an end now, the air fryer. 
We left it for that half an hour show, that's yeah. all we've done, didn't it? Yeah. So it's literally just had a half an hour. Let's have a look and see how it's done. So don't forget, folks, these normally, how long would these normally take if you're doing the conventional way? It's about two hours, isn't it? About two that. hours on a in a little bain marie on your gas cooker normally, wouldn't you? Yeah. So your cooker would be on for two hours. This thing's been on for Thanks. half an hour, 30 minutes. Yeah. This one, as we know, has got water in it, so it's acting as a bain marie. This one's dry, so we're just about to see, folks, whether or not this little experiment has worked for traditional spotted dick. Okay, and down, you're with us, folks. We haven't seen this yet. Here we go. Right, end. We'll take that one out carefully, because the water's still in there, folks. Can you see that? So, now, do you see how easy my was to lift out, baby? You lifted that straight out there. Let's have a little look. Oh, look at that, folks. Right, get that probe, shall? Let's just see if it's cooked. Here, look, folks, look. It's gone over 75 degrees. That is cooked in half an hour, folks. Right, do you want to get your one out or not? Leave your one for a minute. I'm going to this one now. Right, this one didn't have. See what I mean, folks? I think mine is the better way to do it, shall? I don't know, that just burned. Yeah, of course it did. So let's have a look at your one. This one didn't have, sorry, this is my other one. This didn't have any brain marie. Can we just move them together? I see no difference, really. Doesn't look to be any difference. And is this one cooked as I well? I thought that one there might look Hang moister. On. That's uh, over, well, not yet. That's cooked, shall look. Yeah. So these don't need any more cooking, folks. They feel the same, actually. They do feel the same. Spongy, as they should do. Yeah. Can you see my little discs here? They come off nice and easy, didn't they, baby? Yeah. Right, let's get your ones out. Do you want to get your glove on, your new glove? Right, steam. So this one's a steam, put this one Go down there. there. And that one over there is the unsteamed one, which will go this side. Right, we're gonna get these laid out, folks, and then we'll come back to you, and we'll test the difference between the steam two and the unsteamed two. We'll do a different plate as well, might forget. Yeah. Okay, Shara, these are the unsteamed one. That was the one you wrapped up. I've got more of a rise. Oh, you have, yeah? yeah. No. There is a different, but there again, they weren't filled exactly the hey, same. It's a different colour, isn't it? Yours is slightly different colour as yeah. well, yeah. You wrapped yours up to a traditional way. There right. you go. Do you want to get your knife out then, baby? Let's yeah. just, no, let's have a... Oh, go on in. Now. Right, these ones are the steam one, folks. Yeah. So that's the first one, as you know. Oh, you see all the water in there as well. Yeah, look, there's water in there. That's the one I wrapped up. This is the one Sharon wrapped up the traditional way. This will be the proof whether or not that wrapping does make a difference. And I'll say that's risen more as well. No, I don't I think don't... so, no. I think it has. But I must say though, Sharon, they look good. Either way, they look good. Now, will they turn out, Sharon? This is the next thing. Steamed, unsteamed, folks. Just give it a little lift out. Give it a little shake. Oh, it come out, oh, Sharon. Oh, look at that. Folks. Just gonna move Look, and it's, oh, it's squidgy. Right, get that second steam one out, baby. Give it a little bit of a shake. Oh, look how easy they're coming out, folks. Now, they look absolutely superb. And these ones, folks, are the unsteamed ones, so we had not put no water in this one. Well, darker. Go on, do the other one. Do the other one. But I'm wondering. Do the other steam one. Steam obviously keeps it moist. Yeah, well, there you go, folks. It's a Doesn't difference. It? So, by putting the water in the bottom, it looks like that... They, they, they retain more of the original look, although these are still lovely. Don't forget these are cooked all the way through as well, but without the water, they are darker. Right, folks, here we go. I'm really looking forward to this one. Which one should we try first? We've prepared one there, folks, as you can see. We put a little bit of that custard on it. This was the steamed one. And this one is the unsteamed one. So I think we'll try the unsteamed one first, baby. Go on in, off you go. You have a little bash of it. You're trying a bit on its own first, are you? Yeah. Definitely cooked, folks. So half an hour in the air fryer compared to two hours on a standard conventional cooker. What do you think of that one? Very nice. It just tastes like a steam pudding, though. Does it? It does, does it? Mm. Can I have a little go? It's got a little bit of crunch on the outside. Right, well, I'm going in for a little bit of custard, folks. I do like a bit of custard. Here we go, folks. I'm going in. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh. Hurry up now. You know, don't you, folks? You know. Oh, the next one. That is a delight, folks. As Sharon said, the surface is a little bit more crunchy than you would normally get. This is the dry, call it dry baked one. Come on, let's try this one. I Absolutely to... fantastic. I Slow taste... down, you move too fast, oh, baby. It tastes a different way, it's fresh in my mouth. Of course you do. This one was the uh, water bangerie type, folks. So you have a go at that, baby. I'm just curious. So far, that looks a bit more like traditional, doesn't it? A bit more durry, doesn't it? I can see it, I can see the way it's, it's, it's playing with you in your hand. Is there a difference? I prefer that one. Really? Because mm. I do like that little bit of crunch. Right, well we're looking for the traditional here, baby. Yeah, I suppose that's traditional. So, let's have a little go myself, baby. It's totally the same, it's just oh, the texture. Hold on, I've got to go in, Shell. I can't talk at the moment. I'm going to lash it over with custard. She couldn't talk. Wouldn't it be lovely? Here we go, folks. I'm going in again. <laughs> Oh, you know, folks, you know. I'll tell you what, that is a traditional spotted dick, Sharon. Mm. It doesn't matter that you like that one, baby. That one's just as good, folks. So if you don't want to put any water in the bottom and create a little bain-marie in your air fryer, we put boiling water in there, folks. Don't put it in there cold, otherwise you've got to wait for the water to heat up. We, we, we cheated it. We, we, what's the word? Shortcutted it. Mm. We shortcutted it and we poured boiling water in there and it took 30 minutes to cook these mini spotted dicks, folks. They taste exactly the same. They taste the same, but as you can see there, this one has got a darker appearance because the surface has got a bit more crunch to it. So it's really personally depending on yeah, what you fancy. Choice. They are absolutely a winner in my eyes. They are traditional spotted dicks, and I've got a couple of spotted dicks in my hand, Sharon. I've never had that before, baby. So you must give these a try, folks. You've seen it nice and simple in ingredients. 30 minutes in the air fryer. Oh, that's blown my, that's blown my mind, Sharon. 30 minutes in there. Absolutely fantastic. So don't forget, folks, do check out our other food videos. I'm sure you'll find something you do like in there. I like it. And also have a little binge watch of quite a few of our videos. Quite a few of you are doing that and enjoying them as well. Anyway, don't forget, hit the subscribe button, folks, if you haven't subscribed to us. And also ring that little notification bell next to the subscribe button. That means every time we upload a video, you will get notified. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. Oh, see you on a Sunday. Yeah, don't forget, also check out our Sunday vlogs as well, where you'll see what we get up to during the week. Anyway, thanks very much. I can't believe it, folks. Look, she's finished it already. See you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. I'll see you later, baby. Bye.